Beta bound, beta bound, beta bound, beta bound. I love me some beta bound. Just to spill the beans up front, beta bound is one of the best starbound mods you can get. There are reasons why I dedicated a section of my old mod recommendations video to it. It's that good. I also think it's one of the more misunderstood Starbound mods, at least if a few comments I've gotten regarding it since I made that video are any indication. I'll admit, when I made that, I only had a basic understanding of the mod, what it was, and what it did. I never made any deep dives into the mod and what it added, so this will be the first time I've done that. As an aside, one of those comments I got said that Betabound does what it does out of pure spite, which is simply wrong. Betabound is not a spiteful mod, and its creator, Silver Sokolova, is anything but spiteful. In fact, it was a conversation with them that finally prompted me to make this. Seriously, I have been meaning to dedicate a video to Betabound for a long time now. Hopefully, this clears things up and lets you see this mod for what it is. So, what is Betabound, really? Well, it doesn't scream at you on the title screen, telling you it's installed. It doesn't claim to be an overhaul mod or a mod pack disguised as such. It adds no new planet types or races. Correction! Betabound adds at least one planet type, tentacle planets. They're exactly what they sound like. Also, you can get tons of mod-specific minerals and stuffs from them. Anyways and it doesn't change how Starbound plays on a base level. Betabound is subtle, and that's why I love it so much. As the mod's description says, in big bold letters no less, Betabound is present, but not overwhelming. I guess the best way I can describe it is that it's a sort of vanilla plus plus type thing, something that enhances the vanilla experience without being too obnoxious and in your face. The only downside to this subtlety is that it can be easy to breeze over much of what the mod adds. As the name suggests, it reintegrates beta content, stuff from the koala and giraffe builds that got removed with 1.0 into the game. I've said many times before that Starbound was a better game during the koala and giraffe betas, but that doesn't mean I hate what the game became when 1.0 released in 2016. The fact that this video, not to mention my entire Starbound Mod Showcase series, exists is a testament to that. Still, Betabound restoring so much of Starbound's betas is music to my ears. But hold on a moment. It doesn't restore absolutely everything that was in the betas. You won't see the old temperature system or sectors again, for instance. And if you're looking for a mod that hides the story, this isn't it. In fact, you need to go through the vanilla story quest to acquire some of the items Betabound adds. What you will see are weapons. Tons of weapons. Again, many of these come from the betas, when each of Starbound's races had their own slates of unique weapons you could craft, including unique racial staff weapons like the Nova Kid's Red Giant Orb and the Apex's Monkey Nut Staff. Betabound restores all of that and other weapons from the betas that you can find as loot from specific biomes and weapons chests. I don't have a whole lot to say about them, since they behave pretty much how they did in the betas, and most of them are basic spears, swords, hammers, and so on, with fair and balanced stats that won't make your eyes pop. Some of beta's weapons, like the Hackman Knight, have special abilities, in this case shooting crystals. I could joke about all of these being elegant weapons for a more civilized age or something like that, but I figured that might be considered me slapping your heads with my love for the betas. As if I haven't done that enough already. Oh, did I mention you can paint these weapons using dyes? Hell yeah. You'll notice that many of these require materials and ores like refined rubium and ferrosium compound to craft. Stuff that was, big shocker, beta content. In the giraffe betas, ferrosium didn't exist like it does in post 1.0. Ferrosium was a compound crafted from Agasol and gold. In the Koala Betas, Ferrosium was a bar crafted from Agasol and coal. Like with the weapons, Betabound restores that. More or less. In Betabound, Ferrosium compound is made from vanilla refined Ferrosium plus gold bars or Solarium rods, the latter being yet another piece of Beta. Ferrosium compound can then be used to make ferrosium bars, which can then be used to make furniture items, which, in vanilla, are only obtainable by completing tenant quests. Then, there are the techs. 48 in total, if Betabound's wiki is any indication. Going through all of them would take forever and would be tedious. 
Like with the weapons, there's not a lot to say about them, since most of them are self-explanatory. Multiple jumps, gravity manipulation, health regeneration, stuff like that. Many of these can be found as loot in chests, but you also get them as quest rewards and from crafting. One reason why Beta Bound has so many techs is that it adds a whole new tech slot. Sutex. Yeah, I know what it sounds like. Sutex, or bio implants as they were called in the betas, were basically what the EPPs are now, techs that gave protection from planetary hazards, high radiation levels, lack of oxygen, extreme cold, and extreme heat. They're kind of redundant considering EPPs are unchanged, but they're not the only suit techs this mod adds. You've got a tech that gives you vampiric attacks, which allow health regeneration through attacking and dealing damage at the cost of lowered max health. There's a tech that reflects enemy attacks back at enemies, a tech that attracts nearby items, and so on. Stuff that, for the record, wasn't in the betas. You access suit techs by clicking on the suits button when accessing a tech station and a few of these can be crafted at a tech development console. Though, again, you'll need to go through the story and complete outpost quests to get the rest of them. Oh yeah, about those outpost quests. These were a huge part of the giraffe betas, getting random quests from the people at the outpost to fight bosses and get things like those bio implants I mentioned earlier. In other words, those quests were how you progressed through Starbound once upon a time. They made the outpost feel more lively in my opinion, and seeing that removed in 1.0 was kind of... bleh. I know some of that remains part of Vanilla to this day, but still, seeing Betabound bring the old Outpost quest back warms my heart in a weird way. And to make something clear, I promise I didn't make this video as an excuse to wax poetic about Starbound's betas. However, the bulk of what Betabound adds is content from Starbound's betas that got scrapped with a 1.0 release. Given my biases, it's easy for me to shower praise at Betabound for restoring stuff like the old Outpost quests. At least you don't need to have played the betas to understand what Betabound is doing. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, not everything added by Betabound is from the betas. There are radios you can craft and sheet music you can get as loot drops to allow you to play any of Starbound's music tracks anywhere. There are upgrade kits to allow you to upgrade weapons, repair kits for pickaxes and whatnot, Items you can craft to upgrade your ship's fuel capacity, sublight speed, and fuel efficiency. There's an item that lets you wrap gifts like it's frickin' Christmas. Yes, I'm aware that other mods add similar items. Frackin' Universe, for instance, has its own set of music players you can plop down anywhere. And you don't need to shove sheet music into them to get them to play music. It also re-adds beta content to Starbound, but tends to do it in a more awkward way. Having beta content just kinda coexisting with vanilla without really meshing the two together. I don't know. To me, it feels like Beta Bound handles combining beta content with post 1.0 Starbound better. It's not perfect. Some of what it adds is functionally redundant with certain vanilla items, mainly crafting stations. Beta Bound's wooden cooking table is a duplicate of vanilla's kitchen counter, for instance. But if all you want is for Starbound to kinda sorta behave more like it did during its betas, the giraffe betas in particular, Beta Bound's got you covered. Then again, if all you want is a vanilla plus plus type experience in Starbound without wanting to dive into Fracken Universe or even something like Arcana or Maple 32, I'd say Beta Bound's the best mod for the task. Again, that's why I dedicated a chunk of my mod recommendations video to it. It was something I thought people who bought the game only within the past week or so could easily be happy with. Now that I understand more of what it is and what it does, my appreciation and love for Betabound has only grown, and I'm still glad about recommending it to just about any Starbound fan. I'm sure I didn't cover absolutely everything Betabound adds, but hopefully this is more than enough to give you an idea of what it is and what it does. And in case it wasn't clear, Betabound is awesome one of the best Starbound mods, period. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see me dive into some more Starbound mods, I've got a playlist that I'll link in the card at the end of the video. You can also do the usual supporting people on YouTube things. Like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment if you want. If you want to toss some money my way, I will have links to my Patreon and Coffee in this video's description. If you want to join my Discord server, I'll have a link to that down there as well. Take care of yourselves, and goodbye for now.